Photon may be a brand that you've barely heard of, but as of 2021, they're actually one of the top 10 brands in the Philippines in terms of sales. Now, you probably haven't heard of them because they mostly sell commercial trucks like these. This over here though is no commercial truck. This is the Photon Thunder. It's a pickup that will compete with the likes of the D-Max, the Ranger, the Hilux. Does Photon have what it takes to compete in the segment? And is the Photon Thunder worth your money? Let's find out. The Photon Thunder is a box full of surprises in many ways. Mostly positive surprises. For one, you might be surprised to know that even though it's a Chinese brand, it's assembled in Clark Pampanga. Which is likely a good thing because that probably means that there is an abundance of parts for it. One more surprising thing about it is its size. So up here are the dimensions of the Photon Thunder. And if these numbers are accurate, the Photon Thunder would be one of the biggest pickups in the segment. It's bigger than the Navara, the Hilux, the D-Max, and surprisingly, it is wider than the Ranger. Although the Ranger is a bit longer, I wouldn't be surprised if much of that extra width is due to these massive fenders over here, which I think give the Photon Thunder a really muscular look. So here at the back, you get LED day lamps, you get this matte gray garnish with the word Photon embossed on it. Over here, you have your reverse camera. You get a body-colored rear bumper with rear parking sensors. Unfortunately, you don't get an assisted lift gate. So this is quite heavy. But you do get a bed liner or standard on the 4x280. Now, like most pickups in the segment, the payload capacity is 1,000 kilograms. The Photon Thunder has a very rugged looking front end. The grill reminds me of the Ranger Raptors FORD grill. Uh, only instead of FORD, it spells F O T O N, which of course reads Photon. It's finished in matte gunmetal. You get halogen headlamps, halogen fog lamps down here, and you get LED DRLs down here. Overall, I think that's a pretty handsome looking face for a pickup. The 4x2 automatic gets 18 inch wheels wrapped in 265. 60 series tires all variants of the thunder get disc brakes on all four corners and like other pickups in the segment it comes with double wishbones at the front and a rigid axle at the back the photon thunder also comes with some pretty decent underbody protection it has a steel skid plate at the front which is a good thing to have if you want to protect your oil pan when you're off-roading Now thankfully, the Photon Thunder comes with hood struts. Underneath the hood is a 2-liter, 4-cylinder, turbocharged diesel engine that puts out 160 horsepower and 390 newton meters of torque. Now unlike the previous generation of the Photon Thunder, this is no longer a, a Cummins engine. This is now a 4F20 Alcan engine. And it's now coupled to an 8-speed automatic transmission. Pickups, especially at these lower price brackets, tend to have utilitarian looking interiors, mostly made of hard plastics. So one of the first things that surprised me about the Photon Thunder is its interior. Okay, so we're now inside the Photon Thunder. And I think in terms of materials and in terms of design, this definitely punches above its weight class. You get kilted leather on the door sidings. The seats are covered in kilted leather. The driver's seat is power adjustable, passenger seat is manually adjustable, and both front seats have a heating function. The steering wheel is covered in very supple leather. Uh, this is also leather wrapped over here. You got some faux aluminum accents. You get this faux carbon fiber accent over here, which I'm not sure if I'm a fan of, but I don't really hate it either. Now, if you're not a fan of piano black accents, You'd be happy to know that there's very little of that here. Like you have some over here, some over here, a little bit over here, but the piano black accents are definitely very sparingly used. 
Now keep in mind that this competes with the base variants of its competitors and its competitors at this price bracket come with fabric seats, some come with plastic steering wheels, I think none of them come with a push start button, which this comes with, and none of them come with an electronic parking brake. So at this price bracket at least, I think this is one of the better looking uh, pickup interiors. And it doesn't look like a truck's interior. It feels like it belongs to a crossover or a sedan. You have this low dashboard with these swooping lines. You have this high center console which gives the car a somewhat sporty look. So yeah, at this price, it is ahead of the competition in terms of interior quality. In terms of tech though, in some ways it is ahead and in some ways it is a little bit behind. Uh, it is ahead because it has a push start button which none of its competitors have. Like I said, it has heated and powered seats. Um, you got an electronic parking brake without a hold. It gets a 10.25 inch screen which is on par with the Ranger XLT when it comes to size. The screen of the Thunder though is in landscape orientation instead of portrait like on the Ranger. Now unfortunately, it doesn't come with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Uh, which is a bit of a letdown. But it does come with a reverse camera. Uh, unfortunately, you don't get active guidelines. But you do get front and rear parking sensors. It has single zone climate control. And thankfully, you get physical buttons. You get a physical volume knob. You get two cup holders with spring-loaded tabs. And you get this free container which could be an ashtray, coin holder, or trash bin depending on your preference. You get an eyewear holder so you don't have to put your shades in the cup holders anymore. You get an analog speedometer and tachometer and a digital display at the center. At the front, you get a total of three USB ports, two of which are in the armrest storage. Overall, I'd say this is the nicest interior that you can get for the price. The rear seats have the same kilted pattern as the front seats, and they're also covered in very nice leather. Just by looking at it, I can tell that it has good thigh support, and the bolstering is also quite good for a pickup. The bottoms of the rear seats can go up like so. And underneath you have secret storage where you can store your stuff away from prying eyes. By the way, the rear seats have a 60-40 split which makes it easier for you to lift the seats. Now unfortunately, you don't get any grab handles here but you do have uh, this one over here. So the seats, the seats feel quite comfortable. Like I said, the fire support is quite decent. Um, new room is okay. I have about 3 inches of new room. I have about uh, 4 inches of headroom. You don't get any air vents, but you do have USB ports over here. And you also have some storage over here. Um, we also get a center armrest with two cup holders. And it's also leather wrapped and very nicely padded. Despite its very car-like interior, the Photon Thunder feels very truck-like in a lot of ways. You do feel like you're towering over almost everything else on the road, and you do feel like you're occupying a lot of space, which I guess is the point of a lot of these large pickups. You want the road presence, you want to feel like you're king of the road, the Photon Thunder can offer you those things. Despite its size and its high center of gravity, you can drive it on twisty roads without feeling like you're gonna topple over. It can handle, at least by truck standards. Also, even if you drive over uneven roads, nothing creaks, nothing rattles, it feels very solid. One of the first things that I noticed about the Photon Thunder was how quiet it is. You can barely hear the engine inside the cabin. It's not as quiet as the Ranger, but it's more quiet than the Hilux, and I would say the D-Max. Now sitting here, you have a very commanding view of the road. You have a very high seating position, and visibility is also very good. The Photon Thunder feels surprisingly refined on the highway. 
NVH levels are quite good. At 100 kph, you're doing about 1,600 RPM, so the engine doesn't sound strained. Wind noise is also quite minimal. Even though on paper, the power output is not very impressive, the engine is actually quite potent. The power band is not quite linear, which I think makes it more fun. You get decent torque down low, but you feel a surge of power as you go over 2000 RPM. So it gives you a good sensation of speed because you slowly get pushed back into your seat as the revs go higher. The power does drop off at the upper end, but the climb from 2000 to 3000 RPM is quite a lot of fun and it does feel quick. I was able to do 0 to 100 kph in 11 point something seconds, which is pretty decent. It does have decent power for short bursts, like if you want to overtake for a couple of seconds, but it does lose a bit of steam as you explore the upper RPM range. The 8-speed transmission is actually very good. The shifts are almost imperceptible, and the gears are pretty short. It almost always chooses the right gear, depending on the situation. When you're going downhill, it downshifts to the right gear, so you just have enough engine braking to maintain your speed. Okay, so we're going downhill right now. I'm in drive mode. And I like how it downshifts so that you just have enough engine braking that you don't need to step on the brake so much. I'm not on the brakes. And this is actually a pretty nice way to go downhill while you're not consuming fuel because you're using engine braking. You're also not adding wear and tear to the brakes. So the suspension is definitely on the stiff side. I don't think it's as stiff as the Hilux, but not as soft as the Navara and the Ranger. So when you're on very rough roads like this, you do bounce quite a bit. But, but when you're on city roads, it's really not so bad. Most pickups have stiff rear suspensions as they're built for carrying heavy loads. And the Photon Thunder is no exception. At 60 kph, you do bounce quite a bit on Edza. But that is the case with most pickups in its class. For me, it's quite okay, but if you're not used to driving pickups, it may take a bit of getting used to. I drove the Photon Thunder every day for almost a week. I drove it to Rizal, to Bulacan, and that 75 liter fuel tank still had half a tank left when I returned it. So I got about 15 kpl on the highway. In the city, I actually got as high as 11 kpl with moderate traffic. The Photon Thunder starts at 1.18 million pesos for the 4x2 manual. The 4x4 manual sells for 1.29 million and this 4x2 automatic sells for 1.35. At that price, the 4x2 automatic competes with the base automatic variants of other brands. One advantage of the Thunder is that not only does it not feel like a base model, it is actually the top of the line variant. Its interior looks a lot nicer than its base model competitors. It has a relatively quiet cabin and I don't think it looks too bad on the outside. If these things float your boat and you're willing to give the brand a chance, do test drive one and it just might surprise you. Maybe even in a positive way.